Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the 909. We're so glad you're here this morning. A few thank yous right off the start. Let's hear it for the band, as always. Lee's out sick today, so we got some uh, just good help here this morning. They sound great, as always. Jerry, thank you for uh, leading the uh, sound system this morning. And Christy in the kitchen, let's uh, have a big thank you for the breakfast this morning. Psalms 909, the 909, God's a safe house for the battered, a sanctuary during bad times. The moment you arrive, you relax, and you're never sorry you knocked. That's Psalms 909. That's our anthem, and we're so, again, so glad you're here. Let's don't uh, waste any more time. Please stand, and let's uh, enjoy the music. I feel with sin I wouldn't let my dear Savior in when Jesus came like a stranger in the night Praise the Lord, I saw the light I saw the light, I saw the light No more darkness, no more night so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. It's like a blind man, I wandered alone. Worries and fears I claim for my own. Then like the blind man that God gave back his sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light. I saw the light, no more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I was a fool to wander and stray. Straight is the gate and narrows the way. Now I have traded the wrong for the right. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light. I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. There's a dark and a troubled side of life. There's a bright and a sunny side too. Though we meet with the darkness and strife, the sunny side we also may view. Keep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Keep on the sunny side of life. It will help us every day. It will brighten all our way. If we we'll keep on the sunny side of life. Oh, the storm and its fury broke today. Crushing hopes that we cherish so dear. Clouds and storms will in time pass away. The sun again will shine bright and clear. Keep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Keep on the sunny side of life. It will help us every day. It will brighten all our way. It will keep on the sunny side of life. With the song of hope each day. Though the moment be cloudy or fair, let us trust in our Savior always to keep us everyone in His care. Keep 
keep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Keep on the sunny side of life. It will help us every day. It will brighten all our way. It will keep on the sunny side of life. You may be seated. At this time, it is a time to bring our prayer concerns uh, to the cross. Slips are in the back of the room if you'd like to bring those up to the cross. Remember, God does answer prayers throughout the week. The church staff will pray for those, pray for you during the week. So at this time, bring those concerns to the cross, please. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you this beautiful morning here in Highlands asking for your help as we're gathered here together this morning. We pray for your guidance and ask that you show us how to conduct ourselves in the spirit of your work and enthusiasm. We help, help us challenge each other throughout the week to be the best we can for you. Amen. For our Lord's Prayer, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for it is the kingdom Glower and glory forever. Amen. Okay, it's joy time. Let's hear some joys out here on this beautiful morning here in Highlands. Joys throughout here. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So, most of y'all know I'm an artist, and after years of people telling me I wasn't good enough for my professors to jurid shows and stuff, I got admitted to my first jurid show this week. So, I'm super excited. So y'all wish me luck. Awesome. That's a good joy. Any other joys? Here we go. Yeah. Well, I'm just an excited grandma. My granddaughter, who goes to Raven Gap, made homecoming queen. That's awesome. Very nice. Very nice. Any other joys? I, I have one for you. Okay. Uh, it, as you can see up there, it's my beautiful wife's birthday this week, so happy birthday, honey. Here we go. Lots of birthdays. Who else is here for the birthday? You ready for the birthday song? We can do it. Let's do the birthday song. Dabs, dabs. Okay. Birthday time. Happy birthday to everyone's here. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear bless you. Happy birthday to you. All right. Happy birthday week. Any 
Any other joys? Any other joys? I got a personal joy. Um, the 909, it started about 10 years ago, and we lost a, a great member of the church this past week, uh, Clarence Balknight. And a quick story behind the scenes leader uh, that Clarence was. When we first started, we made a phone call to one person, and that was Clarence Balknight. And uh, we asked, he said, What do you need? How can I help to get this started? This bluegrass Sunday morning idea. And uh, Clarence said, uh, Whatever you need, count me in. So uh, thank you, Clarence. Okay, where are we ready for some fall slides, Jerry? Happy anniversaries up here, the Bakers and the Bartons. Happy anniversary to both of them coming up. Are they here? Okay. All right, fall scenery here in Highlands. It doesn't get any better than this, thanks to Bob Sutton. Beautiful. Well, wow, there we go. No better place to live, is there? Okay. All right, Mr. Bob, thank you for your beautiful fall slides from Mr. Bob Sutton. And again, uh, just a reminder, many ways to give throughout the church, as you uh, can go online, uh, go on our website, you can always mail it into the church, or in a few minutes, we can always give here while we're here. So again, uh, it is that time to offer our gifts back to God. We ask that you uh, open your hearts this morning as we uh, pass around the plates. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Uh, Lord, thank you for the gifts that, uh, of offering we've received this morning. Bless it and lead us in a way that uh, may benefit your kingdom throughout the week. We pray for your direction and guidance for its use. Amen. Okay, let's stand and sing just a closer walk with thee. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk. i 
You may be seated. Today's scripture reading is from uh, Psalm 65. Praise is due to you, O God in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. O you, answer prayer, to you all flesh shall come. When deeds of iniquity overcome us, you forgive our transgressions. Happy are those whom you choose and bring near to live in our courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, your holy temple. By awesome deeds, you answer us in deliverance, O God of our salvation. You are our hope of all the ends of the earth and all of the farthest seas. By your strength, you establish the mountains. You are girded with might. You silence the roaring seas, the roaring of their waves, the tumult of peoples, those who live at earth's farthest bounds, are all by your signs. You make the gateways of the morning and the evening shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide the people with grain, for so you have prepared it. Your water, it furrows abundantly settling its ridges, softening it with showers, and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with richness. The pastures of wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows claw themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. Amen. It's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hearts toward heaven and praise the Lord. Let's just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hearts toward heaven and praise the Lord. It's an old uh, Bill and Gloria uh, Gaither. Thank you. Got their first two names. I couldn't remember the last two names or the last name. We had folks from one of our churches. We used to go to Gaither concerts a lot. They they were big Gaither fans, and they were they would invite Kathy and I, and so we got to see the Gaither band a lot <clears throat> in a particular season of our ministry. But I've always remembered that song, and when I when I thought about Psalm sixty five that. That little refrain uh, came to mind, this just praise chorus. I want to take just a moment before I, I go any further. I want to say a word of thanks uh, to Darren and Jennifer, who have been our lead vocals this morning. Lee is sick, 
And that's why Lee's not here. If you looked at your bulletin and the songs in the bulletin were different from what we were singing, we did some adjusting uh, just to try to find some songs that, that uh, would be more familiar uh, to our vocalists this morning, and they've done a beautiful job. Would you give them a good round of applause <laughs> for appreciation? We, <clears throat> Darren and Jennifer, a couple of days ago, didn't know they'd be leading us in singing this morning, and they've done a beautiful job. I appreciate the prayers. <laughs> We are grateful. We are grateful. I want to just, if, if you'll allow me just another word of uh, just sort of personal privilege. I'm not going to be here next weekend. Kathy and I are running away for the weekend and looking forward to that. I'm not quite sure where we're going, but we won't be here next weekend. Reverend Don Roberts will be preaching at the 909 11 o'clock service, so I know you'll look forward to being blessed That's by what... <laughs> I know you'll be blessed by what the Lord has to say to you through uh, Reverend Don but I'm wondering, I've, I've talked to some of you this week, and I know some folks last week, it was our last Sunday. So I'm just, I'm curious, uh, if, if you don't mind, just a show of hands, how many of you, this is your last Sunday for the season, or maybe next Sunday will be your last Sunday? Can I just see that? Just look around, because these, these uh, are part of our family folks who will be move, uh, moving back uh, south. And so blessings, it's been a blessing to have you with us, and uh, have a safe winter, and we will look forward to your return in spring. It's a... It's, it's a beautiful thing being a part of a seasonal church family, uh, but there's always a sadness when our friends uh, head back and joy when you return. So just wanted to acknowledge that this morning. One of the most delightful uh, devotional books that I picked up recently was uh, written by Samuel Wells. Wells is the vicar of uh, St. Martin in the Fields, Trafalgar Square in London. And the book was entitled, uh, or is entitled, Walk Humbly, Encouraging or encouragement for living, working, and being. I picked it up at Duke Divinity School when I was there for a study leave uh, back in September. There's a, one particular chapter, Be a Person of Praise is the name of the chapter. And in that chapter, uh, Wells writes, the most natural response to the discovery of blessing is praise. And so I just want to, as I think about Psalm 65, as I think about the words of of uh, Vicar Wells, I'm just mindful of the invitation from the psalmist and from our faith to live our lives from a posture of praise. I suspect we could all tell stories uh, this morning, uh, maybe and it would even stir in your own heart, of times in your life when you were just overwhelmed with praise, that the abundance of God's blessings uh, was so overwhelming that it was either hard to put into words or, or, or the only response you could make was that of praise. And I think, I love the way the, the psalm begins, that praise is due to God, a reminder that praise is due to God. We don't praise God as some sort of self-help strategy, although there's benefits to praising. We praise God not in order that God will bless us in some way. We praise God because God is worthy of our praise. And I just want to bear witness to the obvious truth of that this morning and invite you to think about how we can, in our lives and with our lives, praise God. And I simply invite us to reflect a little bit about the things for which we can praise God out of just tremendous gratitude in our own hearts and lives. I wonder, have there ever been those moments when your heart was just so filled to overflowing and you just could do nothing but praise? If you'll allow me uh, just a personal story, it was in October, the first weekend of October 2014, a couple of years before Kathy and I moved to Highlands, uh, my dad uh, passed away. He had been, he was 88 years old, and he had been in, in reasonably good health, really, his, his whole life, high blood pressure, cholesterol, all those kinds of things that, uh, that, are, <laughs> that I have in my gene pool and a part of my life as well, but dad hadn't spent any time in the hospital really until just uh, toward the end of his life. And, and he had spent a little time in the hospital, and then he would go to rehab to kind of, again, get his body up and moving again, because just being in the bed for a few days was problematic. So we had gone through that for, for a while, uh, just kind of that rhythm of, of him kind of getting sick and, and going into the hospital for a little bit, and then going into the rehab. And so I spent a lot of time uh, spending nights with my dad there in the, in the, in the rest home rehab facility, and there was one particular uh, night that he told me he was just done. He was just done. He was tired. I knew he was tired. He didn't want to do any more rehab. He was ready to die, and so we hugged and cried, and 
Uh, and then we started a different conversation about what does it look like from this point forward for my dad. Um, and, and my dad had a good business head on his shoulders, and so he began giving me instructions about how I would handle his affairs, and he, we, we did everything that he asked. We got the bank representative to come in, put my name on his checking account, so uh, that would help in the transition when uh, the time came for him uh, to die. And we had a lot of really good conversations, those kinds of conversations that you're so grateful that you have a chance to have. I uh, got to apologize to my dad for some of my teenage antics. Uh, it was a special for me. He had forgotten all about those things, but I hadn't. <clears throat> but it was helpful for me to be able to, to apologize for those things. And it gave me a chance just to tell him how much I appreciated being raised in the home where I was raised, uh, a home where we weren't taught to be prejudiced against people, a home where we were taught to respect all people. And I, I just was grateful because I knew a lot of, uh, of the adult that I had become, flawed as I am, but a lot of the values that I held true, uh, held, uh, held important, uh, were values that had been instilled in my home uh, growing up. And I was so, so grateful for that. So I had a chance to have those kind of conversations. My dad and I hadn't had a lot of conversations around faith. It's interesting. Sometimes you can be a pastor and you can talk to a lot of people about faith, but you don't end up talking to your family sometimes so much about that. But we did in that season. We imagined heaven. We just, it was really neat. And my dad had told me something in that season that was really a blessing. Uh, he said to me one day as uh, I was sitting across from his, uh, his tray, he was having lunch, and he said, you know, when you, when you know you're about to die, when death is near, there is no fear. I am not afraid. And we just rejoiced in that. We gave thanks to God. We prayed together for the peace that God had given him in that season of his life. And so it wasn't scary for us to talk about death. There were even a few nights when dad was in the, in the rest home where I was spending the night and I was across the room, but I could see him. I was sleeping with one eye open. You know how that is. And every time he would move, I would, I would see what was going on, make sure he was okay, make sure he didn't need anything. I wanted to be an advocate for my dad and make sure he was getting the care that he needed. And he would, uh, on two or three successive nights, my dad would wake up, and he would look around. I would see his head pop up, and so I would pop up. He would look around the room, and he would say, am I still here? <laughs> and I would say, yeah, Dad, you're still here with us. <laughs> and he got so frustrated, quite honestly. He said, you know, I've decided I'm ready to die. It looks like I could just go ahead and die. <laughs> and I said, well, Dad, we're not in any hurry. We're glad you're here. Well, eventually, and, and my dad wanted to go to a hospice house. He, he wanted to, he, he was having trouble breathing. He had congestive heart failure. That was the eventual cause of death. But, uh, and he just wanted to, to kind of get the, the level of comfort he could get so that he could breathe easily and just felt like the hospice uh, care would, would really provide that. And so he really, that was a desire that he had. Um, he had a, a health event that, required him to be taken from the rest home to the emergency room. I got a call. I was not there at the time, but I got a call. And so I went to the emergency room and stayed there with my dad. And, and the doctor came in, and the doctor began to talk about all the tests they were going to run. Well, we, we'll do these tests. We'll do these tests. We'll do this and that. And, and before the doctor left the room, we were, again, in the little emergency room sort of cubicle thing. And, and I said, doctor, can you hang on for just a second? Can I have a conversation with my dad with you here? And I said to Dad, I said, now, you, you heard what the doctor said. They can run all these tests, and we can do all these things, and that is an option. I said, but do you want to have a different conversation? Do you want to see if you are qualified for hospice care? And he said, yes, I, I'd, I'd like to do that. And so I, that changed the conversation. The doctor left and said, I'll send a hospice representative in. And so it took a while for the hospice representative to get in, and so my dad and I just had time to talk. My dad's back of his neck was bothering him, so I reached beside his neck, and I rubbed his neck for, I don't know, 20 or 30 minutes, and, and we just had a conversation, and, uh, and we began to talk about what death would look like, what he was hoping death would look like, hopefully he would be able to go to the hospice house, and, and um, uh, he said, you know, he said, I'd love to see my house one more time, and I said, yeah, that'd be great, I don't know if we can do that, Dad, but that, I hear that, he said, I'd, I'd love a hot dog, <laughs> I said, well, well, we'll see what we can do about a hot dog. And he said, I, he said, I'd love to have a beer. <laughs> and my dad always enjoyed beer when, in his adult life, and, and he hadn't had a beer in, in quite some time because of his health. And I said, well, Dad, I don't, I don't know if we can pull that one off or not, but we'll, we'll see. When the hospice representative came in, we, she was wonderful, as hospice folks tend to be. 
compassionate and understanding. And so we, uh, we, we gave the hospice uh, representative uh, our, uh, my dad's request. Could he go to the house? Well, I don't think we can get the ambulance to take you by the house. I just don't think we can do that. How about a hot dog? Yeah, we can do a hot dog. And, uh, and then he said, and I'd like to have a beer. And she said, what kind do you like? <laughs> we, we knew we were among friends at that point. It was Friday uh, when my dad was transported to the hospice house. And I was there with the administrator and the support staff doing all the paperwork. And when they brought my dad in and on the stretcher and took him to his room at the hospice house, and as part of that conversation, we, we got around to the, to the beer part of that conversation, and the administrator uh, said to one of the staff members, I want you to go to the store, and, and I want you to get a beer, a Coors Light. And I said, can you get two? <laughs> it had been a long time since I'd had a beer with my dad. And the administrator started to weep, and I knew we were in a place of compassion. And I was grateful for that. So I spent the night with my dad, Friday night. My dad would die Saturday, a little after 7 p.m. It was Friday night, and I was sleeping in the chair across from uh, my dad's bed. It was a little after 4 o'clock in the morning when he began to stir. And I looked up, again, sleeping with one eye open, and he, raised, he looked across the room. He saw me, and he put his hands up in the air, and he began to applaud. <laughs> so I got up, and I went and sat on the side of the bed with my dad, and we just had a conversation. We just talked there about a little after four in the, in the morning. And at some point, between four and 4.30, my dad said, do you think I can have my beer? <laughs> so I pushed the call button, and I said, can you bring two beers in? <laughs> so my dad and I sat there. Uh, he was laying in the bed, and I was sitting on it. He took his first sip of that Coors Light and um, just said, ah. And I said, Dad, are you happy? He said, yeah. So we, uh, we sipped our beers together. Dad finished his. I couldn't finish mine. It was 4 o'clock in the morning after all. <laughs> and after he finished, and we, again, we, we sat there. It was, it was silent for a good bit of the time. Sometimes we shared. Sometimes we talked. But it was mostly just silence, us sitting there together. After he finished, we did a couple of things to get him settled down, and, and, and he drifted off to sleep. And he had a brief period of time dealing with what they refer to as terminal agitation. Maybe you've seen that, where somebody's just kind of moving their hands around. And, but he didn't, uh, thanks be to God, he didn't have to wrestle with that very long, and he just kind of settled down into that deep sleep that often precedes death. Many of you have seen that before. And so when morning came, I knew my dad wasn't just about to die. I knew he would be dying soon, but his breathing was steady, and so I, I didn't mind walking out of the room. So I went outside, just needed to get some air, and I walked around the campus there at the Randolph Hospice House. And it was a beautiful autumn morning, and the leaves were changing, and it was crisp, not as crisp as we have it here in the mountains. It was the middle part of the state. But I just was so overwhelmed with joy and gratitude. And the last few days I'd spent with my dad were some of the most meaningful I'd ever spent with my dad. Our Friday night, our conversation, our shared beer at 4 o'clock in the morning. I've said to people, there's such thing as a holy beer. It was a holy beer. It was sacred to me <laughs> as a son. And I did just feel so overwhelmed with gratitude to God for that time that I had spent with my dad, I, I prayed out loud, I sang out loud, I spoke to God out loud for an hour or so. I just walked around that campus by myself, but just overwhelmed with praise. I was so grateful and I was so thankful. And I've had other moments in my life where I just was so overwhelmed, all I could do was thank God. All I could do was praise. All I could do was acknowledge that I had been blessed in such a way that I, I didn't even have words to say, but I found something to say, praying and singing and praising God. Have you ever had those moments in your life where you just 
We're so overwhelmed with gratitude. When you just realize that you had experienced something holy in your life, something that was of great meaning to you, something that drew God near to you, something that reminded you of God's great love for you in the little things, in simple ways. I was so grateful and thankful. All I could do was praise God. You know, the memory, I thought about that memory a bit. When October rolls around, it comes back in my mind. And the memory of that still blesses me. I still remember that Friday night, that early morning. I still remember walking around the campus. I still remember what it felt like to be overcome with praise and thanksgiving. Perhaps you've had those moments too. Maybe they've not been in moments where you're leading up to death. Maybe they've been in more joyful and happy moments. Maybe they've come through walking through the woods or, or sitting on, a, on the back porch with a cup of coffee on a brisk autumn morning in the mountains or, or standing by the beach or, or walking along the beach in the morning or just enjoying the changing of the colors of the leaves or enjoying the beauty of the majesty of flowers. Maybe you've just been brought into a time of praise hearing the singing of the birds. Maybe you see received a card in the mail from an old friend or somebody gave you a word of encouragement that really kept you from throwing in the towel when you were close. Perhaps you've worshiped God and praised God in the quiet sanctuary of your own heart while you watched your children sleep. Those are holy moments. Maybe in having one more visit with an old friend. Maybe it was a song on the radio that just seemed to have the message that was perfect for you. Maybe a bit of scripture pierced your soul. Maybe someone wrapped their arms around you and held you tight. And they became the arms of Christ for you. A tangible expression of God's unconditional love. Sometimes we cannot help but just praise God in those moments and give thanks to God from whom all blessings flow. We cannot help but praise God when we are caught up in those moments, when we recognize we are being blessed in ways that we do not deserve and that we have been blessed with a love that we can never fully repay. Sometimes God's love is just so palpable, so real, so transformative, so welcoming, so accepting that we are simply overcome with joy. I invite you to go there in your heart this morning. The psalmist bears witness to God's blessings upon all of creation, and it causes me to think about how creation praises God as well. It's not hard to see, especially in beautiful seasons like this. As I thought about Psalm 65 this week, I thought about the uh, Rodgers and Hammerstein classic song, The Hills Are Alive with the Sound of Music. Remember that? Immortalized by the Sound of Music, Julie Andrews in 1965. Songs they have sung for a thousand years. Again, I, I think our ability to praise God is God's gift to us. I don't think we are called to praise God because God is an egomaniac <laughs> deity. I think God gives us the gift of praise because what it does to us it brings us into God's presence, it lightens, our, lightens our load. You know, life is hard sometimes. <laughs> life is hard a lot of times. Kate Bowler, who is a professor at Duke Divinity School, she's written a number of books. She's, she has uh, wrestled with cancer for the last number of years, and her testimony is a powerful testimony, and she is a beautiful spirit. There's a mural in downtown Durham, North Carolina, that has a phrase that she has said, and it's got her name underneath it. If you're in downtown Durham, you may see it on a building, and the phrase is, life is so beautiful, life is so hard. A recognition that we all know. So, the gift of God to allow us to praise God that gives us hope, that encourages us, that gives us peace, even when we walk through the valley, even when we find ourselves in difficult times. So today, I simply have come to echo the words of the psalmist. Today, I've simply come to invite you to remember the gift of praise. I've simply come today to invite you to lean into that gift that God has given you. In that chapter that Samuel Wales writes, Be a Person of Praise, he he closes with these words. 
Make every act of your life a sacrament of love to others and a song of praise to God. For your existence is a miracle. And your redemption is amazing grace. And never cease from singing. Let's just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hearts toward heaven and praise the Lord. Let's just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hearts toward heaven and praise the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Patty, I'm going to invite you to come forward, our lay leader. Also, Robbie, if you will come forward as well. I don't have a mic. I'm sorry. Just speak loud. Okay, I'm going to to look to uh, Patty as our lay leader to announce our new member this morning. So Robbie is transferring his membership uh, from First United Methodist Church in Athens, Georgia, to Highlands United Methodist Church. And so, Robbie, I'm going to ask you questions that you've been asked before, but I want you to have an opportunity to bear witness in your new church family here. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, answer, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, answer, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, answer, I do. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful to Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representative in the world? If so, answer, I will. will. Robbie, of course, has already been baptized as a member of the church, so we're not re-baptizing Robbie this morning. We don't do that in our tradition, but we will use water symbolically to call to Robbie's remembrance, his baptism, and I invite you to let it call to remembrance your baptism as well. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray that you will pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this water of gift and he who receives it to call to his remembrance his baptism. We pray your blessings upon uh, the gift of baptism, on the gift of Ravi to us and pray that you would help us all to reclaim the promises we made and were made on our behalf at our baptism. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Ravi, if you'll step right over here. Robbie Roberts, remember your baptism and be thankful. Patty, will you come place your hand on Robbie? Robbie, the Holy Spirit, work within you. That having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. I have one more question for you, Robbie. As a member of this congregation, Highlands United Methodist Church, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts? your service, and your witness? If so, answer, I will. will. Members of the household of God, I commend Robbie Roberts to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase his faith, confirm his hope, and perfect him in love. Would you respond? We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church We renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Robbie, receive this word of blessing. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. Amen. Welcome. Thank you. Bless you.
I'm going to invite Robbie uh, at the end of our service today to join me out front. I know you'll want to greet him uh, before you leave today. With that, I'm going to turn to the band to lead us in our closing uh, song this morning, which is Peace in the Valley. Stand as you are able as we sing together Peace in the Valley. I'm so tired and so weary, but I must go along till the Lord comes and calls, calls me away. Oh, the morning so bright, and the Lamb is the light, and the night is as black as the sea. There will be peace in the valley for me someday. There will be peace in the valley for me someday. There'll be no sadness, no sorrow, no trouble. I see there will be peace in the valley for me. be changed from this creature that I am. There will be peace in the valley for me someday. There will be peace in the valley for me, Lord, I pray. There'll be no sadness, no sorrow, no trouble. There will be peace in the valley for me. Peace in the valley for me. Special thanks to our band. Again, thank you, uh, Darren and Jennifer, for leading us this morning. Well done. Thanks to Kevin for leading us so well this morning. And I invite you now to look to me for your closing benediction from the book of Ephesians. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we could ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Let's fly away.
just a little bit.